Hey guys, namaste. Uh, so I wanted to take a few minutes and just go over at least the three meetings, um, different types of meetings and different types of recovery that I've been through. Um, and then give everybody like a gist of just like what each one's about. Um, so of course there's um, AA and NA. Um, I'm not sure if a a NA does this. I've really only done um, AA. I went to one NA meeting um, when I was like 16. And um, I just felt like it was a lot of like war stories um, and didn't really enjoy the experience. But um, I can't say that I've had horrible experiences with AA. There's been a couple meetings that I have really, really enjoyed. Um, so with that said, although AA is not my fellowship, um, I have been to a few meetings, so I do know what it's about. So in New Jersey, at least, um, so they have like South Jersey Intergroup. Um, they'll give you like a, this. And then you can get numbers on the back. Um, and it's a list of all the, the meetings in South Jersey. Um, and then it'll, like, inside it has, like, a description. So if you see, like, OD, that means, like, open discussion. If you see W, that means, like, it's a women's meeting. If you see M, it's a men's meeting. Like, just certain things. Like, some just go over literature. Some just go over the big books. Some it's a step meeting. Some it's a tr tradition meeting. Some it's a speaker meeting. Um, which I thought was great because I tend to... Um, really like the speaker meetings because I always feel like I get something out of it. Um, I'm able to like just connect with another addict, uh, which has been great. Um, and that's just my personal experience. Um, so, and of course, AA has a lot more meetings than the other two. Um, and that's just because they're, they've been around for decades. They're more well known. Um, and you know, it's different for everybody, but generally when you go in, <laughs> um, about an hour to some, some of them I think are even an hour and a half, but you go in, um, if it's a speaker, the speaker will speak for about 25 to 30 minutes in the first, in the first half. Um, and then it's open for discussion for the, for the next 30 where you just talk about like how you were able to connect with that speaker, whatever step meetings, they'll go over the step, they read it from the book. And then, um, so the first like 30 minutes would be reading from the book about the step and then everyone's interpretation on or their discussion towards it. Um, and it's different. It depends on um, which one you like. I think there are some people who really do like the step work and stuff like that. Clearly, it's not my fellowship, so I can't really speak on that. Um, but that's just my interpretation of AA. Then there's also Smart Recovery. Now, Smart Recovery is interesting. Um, I know that there are a few meetings... Um, around here, but the one that I went to, I went to one in Philly, um, and it was actually really interesting. So you, you go in, everyone goes around and you initially introduce yourself, you'll introduce yourself, then you'll introduce your, what your addic addictive behavior is. Um, and then you'll talk about the emotions that you're feeling at that time, what your, was your success and what was your struggle for the week. Um, and then they'll usually pick somebody to like share. Now, I've only been to one set meeting, so they could have different ones, but this is just the experience that I have. Um, so then they'll generally pick one or two people who's like open for discussion and just speaking on something that maybe affected them for that week and they're able to talk on it. So the, my take on smart therapy or smart, smart um, recovery is that it's like a group in intensive therapy. That's basically what it is because they encourage um, crosstalk. Um, and they encourage you to like speak out and put your view towards things, which is great on one hand, um, cause then you're able to get a take and a view on other people's perception of certain things. But then it's also, um, it's, it's, it's intimidating. I know the first one that I went to, I was like, Oh my God. I was like terrified. Cause I was like, I, are people just like going to be flying off at the handle, like talking a certain way. Um, and that's probably just cause of my own. Um, recovery experience with some people that are very harsh and it has to be a certain way. Um, but uh, so far the couple that I've gone to, it's been interesting. And I, I mean, I definitely, I thought it was really cool. Um, and I think that more people should try that as well. So I don't know if anybody else wants to, it seems like it's also like another hour, hour and a half type of thing. I know that there's one around here that we have that's an hour and a half. Um, but it seems, um, it's definitely interesting. It seems like it's more open to everybody and their addiction. 
And then also I've something that I've realized with smart recovery is you have to be a licensed practitioner, um, not like a doctor's practitioner, but like, um, with addictive counseling. So that's actually really cool. That's interesting. Um, in order for you to chair the meeting that is where as for AA and refuge recovery, you don't necessarily need that. Um, actually you don't need that at all. Not necessarily. Um, you just need to have some type of recovery time. You think you have to be a year, a year sober in AA and NA. I'm not hundred percent sure on that, but I know for refuge recovery, just as long as, um, you are, um, that you abstain, that you promise to abstain for six months to chair a meeting. And then there is refuge recovery. Um, so from the outside looking in, I feel like I hear a lot of people, like they just seem super curious about refuge recovery, but they're also really confused. Um, so refuge recovery is a Buddhist inspired path to recovery. Um, and in my interpretation of what Buddhism is, Buddhism is just about kindness. Um, and the way that the creator of Refuge Recovery, I truly feel like he almost made it like Buddhism is for recovery. Um, and it's beautiful and I'm loving and encompassing, um, Refuge Recovery. I've always loved Buddhism and I love Buddhism prior to my, to even, um, my recovery, but it's getting into my recovery that's really made me encompass what Buddhism is about. Uh, cause it's about kindness and compassion and meeting things with kindness and compassion. And it's not about an eye for an eye and being spiteful that, you know, we're all hurt and ultimately hurt people hurt people. Um, and it's because of our suffering that we act a certain way. And just because we're suffering doesn't give us the right to act a certain way. So with that, um, refuge recovery is about four noble truths and the four truths, the two are, basically about your addiction, how it came about, uh, a deep inventory about your recovery, about your addiction, and how um, you're feeling about it in your recovery. Um, then it's also just about that recovery is possible and that these are the steps and the guidelines to get you there. Then there's also the Eightfold Path. And the Eightfold Path is basically like intermittent steps. Um, how he describes it, which I feel is like the best description is that it's a, as a wheel, um, and that as the wheel turns, you will encompass, um, all of the, the, the steps towards your recovery. Um, and I think it's just a beautiful way of, um, always having something to revert back to and understand, um, that there's like mindfulness and meditation and awareness and, um, action, certain things that need to be a part of a recovery, because ultimately, I'm a firm believer, you can abstain, and I feel like there have been people who do abstain, uh, but to truthfully be a part of your recovery, you just have to become a different person. I know I held on to the fact that I thought that I could be a perfectionist, my cat, um, I thought that I could be a perfectionist still out of my recovery, but I was perfectionist in my addiction and I was never going to encompass. And for me, that's why AA would not work for me because I would want the perfect steps and the per perfect everything. And so far for R and R there's just, there isn't that perfection, um, towards things. I, at least I'm not feeling that I'm a little bit, I'm able to meet myself with more compassion. And I think that's like the most important thing, especially for a lot of people in recovery is to meet ourselves with more compassion and empathy for ourselves. That's important, and I know that's something that I struggle with. So, but for an R and R meeting, what happens is it's generally an hour, an hour to fifteen minutes, and um, what you do is the first twenty minutes is spent in a meditation. You can ask. There's um, if you go to the Refuge Recovery website, which I place on um, right here, um, there are select meditations that are guided, which I usually do for when I whenever I'm chairing my meeting. Um, then there's also, I know people use like the inset timers. Um, I've even used ones off YouTube and stuff like that. Um, and meditation is really just about, um, settling the mind, coming to terms and just being in the present moment. Um, people use it. There's no right or wrong way about meditating. Um, people think that it's just about like completely clearing the mind, but it's pretty impossible to do that. <laughs> um, but it's just a way about being centered with yourself. Uh, 
and I think it's beautiful. Then um, after the meditation, you generally read from the book for about 10, 15 minutes. Most of the chapters in the R&R &R book are um, smaller, so it's, it's quicker to get through. Um, and then you generally will just discuss afterwards in a tag pass situation um, what you're feeling about your addiction towards what you, what we read, how the what brought up whatever feelings were brought up for you in the meditation. Um, it's a really beautiful experience, and I'm enjoying R and R. And I really, really encourage anybody who's thinking about starting a refuge recovery meeting to um, to definitely just do it. Just jump on it and. You know, I know if you're feeling some type of way that, oh, I don't have enough recovery time and stuff like that, r and R is just getting started and, you know, it's a beautiful experience. It's all you really need to do in order for you to start a meeting is just that you're going to promise yourself and those that you're chairing that you're going to abstain for six months. Um, so please, I encourage everyone and anyone who is thinking about doing it just to do it so that we can get meetings out there and get your sang on, get a community going because it really is, I'm extremely thankful, it's a beautiful experience. And um, other than that, that's really all I had to say. That's all I wanted to share this week. So I hope everybody is having a beautiful and amazing sober and clean week. And Namaste Sober, and I hope you do too.